In Passaic County, a massive project is underway to remove and replace 6,500 lead service lines. Half are located in Patterson. The Passaic Valley Water Commission and Mayor Andre Sea today announced the start of the work, which includes investigating another 11,000 service lines that may also be posing a serious health risk. The aging pipes connect the water main to water lines inside homes and buildings. The roughly $50 million dollar project is being paid for through a state bond and loan forgiveness program due to legislation requiring all lead and galvanized steel service lines be replaced by 2031. There's no safe level of lead exposure, but it's not just found in drinking water. Lead is still present in old paint found in the aging housing stock across New Jersey, and it's a common source of poisoning for young kids. Raven Santana reports on a new law requiring the state to remediate thousands of lead burdened homes going into effect this week. If a young person, if a child tests positive, that's when the state steps in and takes action. Today, we change that practice. No longer are kids the lead detectors. That's because starting Friday, New Jersey's new lead safe certificate law will go into effect. The new law will require all New Jersey municipalities to enforce lead inspections for rental properties like this one here in Trenton. But there are at least 257,000 housing units in New Jersey with children under six. They're the most vulnerable to this lead poisoning. So 257,000 units across the state of New Jersey that we know of that have lead paint in them. Sean Jackson, CEO of Isles, a community development and environmental organization that supports families and communities in Trenton, says the new requirement is just as important as having smoking carbon monoxide detectors inspected in homes. A sweet and low packet, right? One little packet you see at the restaurant that you use, one of those packets is enough to contaminate the entire football field at Giant Stadium. That's all it takes, one little pile of lead like that. So you're in a, just in a small home, even less. So municipalities or landlords, landlords can step up and do this, will need to be testing rental units that were built before 1978. That's when the law changed in, in the United States and you no longer could use lead paint. So if your unit is built 1979 or later, this doesn't apply to you. It's old homes like this where you've got the challenge of legacy lead paint. And what we want to do is require that they get inspected. And if we find lead paint, make sure that it's safely taken care of. And it can be done for a reasonable cost. And the other exciting thing is the state just put into the budget this year $170 million to help landlords and uh, tenants make sure that these buildings get cleaned up safely and responsibly. What was done here? Can you just go through the process of what was changed to make this safe? They would replace the whole window. They placed the window, the window jam, and the window stop. And then on the inside, we encapsulate the window sill, which is scrape it down to bare wood and um, paint it with lead lock paint. And then whatever color it was, we return that color. Lead remediation specialist Bennett Sims gave us a tour of this multifamily rental unit. While we often hear about the concerns of lead in drinking water, he says the presence of lead in old paint that can flake off or turn into dust is a more common source of lead poisoning in children. When we come to test, we do what's called a risk assessment. So we go through the whole house, you know, but we focus on the friction surfaces because that's what causes the most dust. Like I said, um, whatever kids can reach on a, on a kid's height, that's what we focus on. So the window sills, the window aprons, the door jams, and the baseboards, just surfaces like that. Lee Wasserman is a lead-based paint expert and runs a lead evaluation from Lou Environmental. He's been fielding calls from towns and landlords since the DCA's regulations came out this week and says there's been a mixed reaction about the law. I think there's also a populace of properties where I don't want to say they're bad landlords, but maybe they just don't have the resources to address their properties or what have you. So I think that group is certainly not thrilled with this new law. The benefit is to know. Wasserman says while remediation can be costly, it's more likely some landlords will opt to address the immediate hazard through a more short-term fix, like applying a protective coating over the existing paint instead of permanently removing it. Units will then need to be reinspected every three years or when a new tenant moves in. For NJ Spotlight News, I'm Raven Santana.